Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Sparta by Plague Island Games. This is a one to two player card driven area control war game in which you're going to be playing in one of two separate wars. You can either play in the Peloponnesian War or the Thebian War, a more classical one with this Sparta versus Athens, or you can play against the Thebes versus Athens. Um, and this game is kind of gonna have a base setup where you're gonna start as Sparta, or you're gonna start off with one of the two Two other ones and you're going to be placing down your locations on the map areas that you control areas that they control you're going to have certain foot units and of course certain types of sea units that are going to be placed uh, down as well in your deployed areas and you're going to be utilizing your money you're going to be utilizing your leaders to control these fleets to control these armies and to go out and control as much area as possible because at the end of the day all that matters in especially this job this generation is collecting and controlling as much area as possible. There are distinct unique differences between the battles and between the setups for each of the different military uh, wars and of course the times in which you're going to do them. I'm going to mainly discuss the Peloponnesian War and of course the different ages in there and of course the different rounds and explain how the game kind of works and how it flows and of course my review for the game Sparta. It's a uh, complex and uh, I would say pretty lengthy version of a war game but for the most of you guys who've seen or played war games like this before, like a Two Minutes to Midnight or like Twilight Struggle, I think you're going to like this game as well. I'm a huge fan of the uh, Spartan lore, and I think you guys who aren't should be after seeing this game, and for those of you who are, you're going to really dig Sparta. Let's, let's get into it. So the setup for the game is A, first choose which war you want to fight because that will determine who you're going to be choosing between the different locations and characters that you can play with. Uh, my first suggestion is to start with the Peloponnesian War and start with playing Athens and Sparta, the red and the or blue characters. Then you're going to go ahead and look in the rulebook. It will tell you where to set everything up. It'll say, okay, Sparta's going to start with one influence in Corinth. It's going to start with three in Sparta. It'll say that Athens has control of Athens. It's going to have a certain number of influence in et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And you'll just place everything there. It'll also say, okay, you uh, as Athens are going to start with a certain number of fleets mobilized with their leaders, what leaders you're going to start with and where they're going to be placed on the board. And uh, the same thing is going to go for both characters. So it's literally just following a list. You'll, you'll do that. Additionally, you're going to have a deck of cards. There's going to be an action set of cards here. And you're going to look at the bottom uh, left-hand corner. And you're going to check to see, okay, this is the Arcadamian War, which means you're going to want to have every single card with the bottom left saying this specific location, or this specific time in history, in which case you'll shuffle these up. And this is going to be your action management deck, which will change throughout the game. You're going to be adding additional cards to it. And you're going to ignore other cards because you're not playing with those. So there's always going to be a certain number of cards that you may or may not get at the very beginning, middle, and end of the game. After you have set this up here, you're going to go ahead and take the battle cards and set them aside because you will be utilizing those. There's going to be talents that you can get, which is basically your currency. There are colonies that you can earn that will open up new paths of conquest in the game, as well as, of course, being able to control them. And then you're going to set certain requirements. You're going to set the battle strength marker to zero. This is going to determine whether you win or lose battles. You're going to set your round marker to number one on the Peloponnesian war track, and uh, you'll do the same thing for uh, the army strength. Now, Sparta is a bit stronger in army, but weaker in navy, and so you'll see the differentiation on these boards here. And then you'll set aside anything else that you might have, like talents and favors, etc., things that you can gain. Any of your raid tokens and your siege tokens and tokens that you might get throughout the game will be set aside as well. And you're just going to go ahead and begin the game after you've got everything out. You'll have the specific card that you can draw, and it'll say, okay, this is the beginning of the game, uh, and you can play this version, which is the easier one, which I would recommend. It's like the time of peace, I believe. There's certain numbers of them that will basically let you start by placing different influence in different areas. So it'll be like, okay, the Spartan character can place an influence out, then the Athenian character can place one or two out in different areas, and then the game begins. And you're going to just follow. Uh, this thing here, which looks intimidating, but it's actually not too bad. You'll take the turn sequence six times, and each time you do so, you'll move this little tracker until the very end, which is going to signify the end of the game. And that's basically the setup for the game. You'll make sure they have everything placed on the board, but it's all pretty much straight stated in the rules. And everything else that you're going to have, like your talents and your dice, you'll just set aside next to your player board. Before we get into the gameplay, remember, I'm going to be like briefly going over what you do between each of the rounds. There's a lot that goes on in this game. It's very fairly streamlined, 
But if you want to see uh, a really well done explanation of the playthrough for the first couple rounds, I'm gonna have a link down below in the description to another YouTuber who has done a very good job of this. It's where I checked out the rules, I read through it and we started playing a few rounds and then I decided to make sure I was playing it correctly and I checked out his and after I was happy with looking at that, I was like, okay, this is actually something I probably even should have watched before the rules and then jumped into the rules. It actually would have helped me specifically how I like to play. So there'll be a link down there before we get into it just in case I get anything wrong, which is possible because I'm not really, really like knowledgeable in war games. But first thing you're going to do in your turn sequence is you're gonna do regional assessment. And how that works is pretty easy. You're gonna check the regions of the map for each of the Athens and Sparta characters, and you'll decide if you control that region. And if you do, you're going to gain these little plaques that are going to give you currency, as well as these guys here, which you'll be placing down on the board. And so you'll say, okay, Attica, right? Uh, this is a location on the map that is Athens controlled, right? And so the Athenian player is going to own this because he has three regions that he controls and one with a talent, one with a uh, with an influence on it. Oh, actually, it would be actually this one actually would be control as well. But if you have the most controlling markers in a region, you're going to get these plaques here. So for instance, as well, we have uh, Corinth here. Nobody actually owns that because an influence is present on the board, but there's not enough influence on Corinth to actually uh, make it so that you own the area. You have to actually have a control marker in at least one of the areas to control it fully. If, you have, if you're the only one, you'll control it. <laughs> for instance, like over here in Syracuse, Gela is the only location controlled by the, Athen uh, the Spartan player, which means that he controls this whole area. So he's gonna take Sicily and get all the rewards, all the talents, AKA money, and anything else that might be on there. And so you're gonna do that for each of the regions. Assess whether or not you have control of it. If you do, take the placard. These things will go back and forth throughout the game, and you'll be checking every single time during this phase. Bam, next thing, the hoplite reset. You're gonna be adjusting your army track strength, which is down here. You're gonna, the player with zero strength can go up to four, the player with a lower track will go to five if it's tied, et cetera, et cetera. And then you're going to apply any bonuses on the track as well, based on the specific things. It says it on the board and it says it here. Next is shipbuilding. You're gonna pay a certain number of talents shown underneath the set of your strength. So for instance, if I wanted to build a navy, it's gonna cost me a talent here if I was playing as the Spartan player. And if you wanted to build it as the Athenian player, it's gonna cost more. The farther along you get, the more expensive it's going to get. And then there is the recruitment. Pay one talent uh, per asset returned to play in Sparta first and Athens, and you can go back and forth doing that. You'll be spending money to put out talents. Then you're gonna to go to rebuilding. You'll remove basically all the raids, um, except for anything that is under siege. So raid markers are basically locations that you're fighting over, and it's gonna have these little fire markers. If that location goes under siege, then it'll have this marker here. Raid markers, after you're done raiding, if you don't wanna siege, that's going to end this, the raid. Otherwise, you can go into siege, which will allow you to get rid of influence on locations. And over rounds, you're going to be getting rid of these pieces of influence so that you can kind of stop the control, get rid of the control of the opposing player. Um, after that, then you're going to deal out the action cards, which is where the action rounds are gonna take place after that. So every player is gonna get six of these guys here, three, four, five, and six, and three, four, five, and six. And those players are each gonna be using all of the cards in their hand. This is where the action phase comes into play. It's where one player is gonna play an action card and uh, go through the action round phase, and then the next player will do the same thing. And how that works is, um, Play an action card if you have one. Ignore this step if you don't, or spend two favor to discard this instead of playing it. So you probably should play the cards. <laughs> You'll then deploy, mobilize, hoplites, and tiramis, which are basically the ships and the mobile infantry. Uh, you will be able to yeah, deploy and mobilize them. You'll be able to prosecute sieges, try and remove your opponent's locations. And then there's battles. And how battles work is all illustrated here. But the basic idea of it is if you and another uh, one of the commanders or leaders is having a fight. You're going to be rolling one, two, or three dice based on certain requirements and rules, which you'll check and see how that all works. Generally speaking, it's going to be one, but you can get more depending on like the locations around, etc., etc. But how it works is pretty simple. If you roll a one, you are going to, that's a fail. Uh, two or three, nothing really happens. And then four, five, or six is a success. And generally speaking, successes are gonna remove certain portions off of the board. Uh, you're gonna have leaders and leaders will have abilities. So in order to actually mobilize and then deploy 
your armies, as well as your navy, or tier maze, you're going to actually have to have a leader. And these leaders have abilities, they can be upgraded as well, and these will help you either in battle, after battle, when they're getting spent, or when they're coming back. It just depends on what they do. But battles in this game are going to kind of influence and control what you can do. And after you've gone through playing all your cards and taking your actions, deploying, setting up battles, then you're just going to go back to the next turn sequence and move on from there. And it just keeps going on like that. And that's basically the idea of the game. You're going to be basically gathering uh, and then going through the recruitment and the rebuilding, et cetera, et cetera, dealing with the action cards. And then bam, the main game starts with the action card sequence where you're playing these cards, deciding what you want to do with them, making the, the choices with the specific action cards and trying to gain as much control of the territories as you possibly can in the game Sparta. Now, there's a lot to get to, but I, I want to really mainly want to cover here because I think that there's somebody else who did a better job of explaining it is what I thought about the game. So you can decide if it's right for you. Okay, so first up on the bat, this is a war game. This this is a hand management, card driven, area control type of a war game, don't get me wrong, but it is still a war game. It's heavy, it's gonna feel like uh, Two Minutes to Midnight and a Twilight Struggle. Those are the two games that I have actually went through and played, so, and these are it's kind of in that same genre. Now, there might be better games to illustrate how this game feels, but I haven't played them. This is actually a pretty unique experience for me, especially being a two player game and it being a war game. I don't usually cover these specific type of war games because usually I can't wrap my head around them. But in this case, I did a pretty good job. I actually kind of understood what was going on here, how to choose the battle strength and uh, determine who wins in a fight going up and down these tracks here, how to set these strengths up. Like it was all kind of streamlined and set aside to where I understood, okay, this is what I want to do. And with these action cards, giving me very specific types of things I can do or choose not to do, it made it really easy for me to understand, which is nice. Normally in war games, uh, there's so many things you can do that it's so overwhelming, but for me in this one, it actually kind of worked pretty well. Uh, what do I like about this game? Well, first of all, the, the, the setup works really nicely. It's very historically accurate, which I really do appreciate in this type of a game. Uh, choosing between the two different wars, whether you want to do the Peloponnesian War or you want to do the Thebian War, you, it talks about the different ages in play. And uh, as you kind of go through the ages, you're adding new cards to the deck, which are going to allow you new actions and change the way the game is going to work, which is excellent. And you may or may not be using certain cards in the game, which means that you're going to get tons of different replayability options when you go through it, even though your main source is going to be, in my opinion, using these guys here. Is there a nice benefit? Speaking of nice benefit, which I didn't talk about too much, but you'll be able to purchase battle cards as well throughout the game. You'll be spending favor to get, get these battle cards here. And in a battle, when you're fighting, going back and forth, you'll be playing these cards. Bam, I play this and it makes you increase or lose strength, or I do this to get this specific location. Well, bam, I do this. And you just go back and forth playing these guys up until you don't have any left or you don't want to play any of them. And these can really change the tide of battle and they're really easy to grasp as to how they work and you can come up with some really unique twists and turns in the game. You can have somebody fighting you and you think you're going to lose that location or in fact you know you're going to lose it but you have a card in your hand that's going to let you control a different portion of the area in which you still want to control for the next round to get that currency uh, and in which case you'll be able to drop that card down or even save it for later if it's not that important. And each of the cards kind of works historically as well. I took a little bit of uh, ancient, uh, I wanna, it's called the like ancient pagan cultures. So it kind of mixed with Greek and Athens and mainly Roman history. But this sets it up to make it clearly understandable why and where and when certain things happened and why they happened. And so for people who really really dig history, this is a great way to explain certain things, especially for these, these pagan eras. And I really do appreciate that as well. Okay, let's move on to the quality. Uh, this is a prototype. Things are gonna change, rules are gonna change, and as it stands, it's brilliant. It looks great. I love the different little characters here. I know that it could be standees as well as miniatures, depending on the Kickstarter campaign and what goes on here, but I really do enjoy these. I like the markers, they make sense. Uh, it's, it's, it's pretty clear to me. Now, I, I'm not certain if you, if you have a specific location and it has three of the influence needed, if you put three of these discs, and whenever it goes uh, from three to two, they change to cubes. But the way I did it was, if you have full control, you put a disc. And when you don't, you put cubes, a number of them. I don't think it really matters all that much though. What I also like about this game is the different uh, ways in which battles are achieved. And, and, and you're gonna have like different areas that you control will give you different strengths in like elites or skirmishes or cavalry or in your fleets area. And these will change your power and residual of the battle and determine in the end what 
what army is going to win based on all of this like criteria that you go through, but it's all illustrated out and makes for a really interesting gameplay. What I also like too is that wars aren't simply one and done. It's not like a quick thing here. Sometimes it requires a little bit of planning and preparation and you're gonna be sending characters out and you're going to be trying to defeat or raid this the city and then trying to under siege it to remove the influence and it feels really, really historically accurate. This took a long time and it made sense in this game how that operates as well. And not only that, but characters can die. Now you have a certain number of characters like you're gonna have the Navark, the Strategos and the um, Polmark. And these guys here are going to be uh, general commanders that kind of keep with you throughout the game so you don't have to lose them. But based on whatever setup you choose, you're gonna have actually named Name leaders and real to life name leaders. These guys here are going to be coming out working with your armies and fleets and you're going to be kind of illustrating where they should go and sometimes they'll be spent or sometimes they might die and if they die that sucks but they're gone forever. And <laughs> true to history as well, I do appreciate that. This game is deep in strategy. Uh, it's deep in thought. You're going to be deciding really important things throughout the game, and each move can change the tide of battle, where you're going to be positioned, where you're not going to be positioned. And at one point, you might have this control, and then suddenly it's all gone, and then you have to move on and choose different routes. And these cards kind of make use of that, as well as, of course, when you choose to mobilize and when you choose to, like, deploy these guys out uh, to, to fight certain areas. Speaking of which, uh, what's really cool about this game, too, is, like, you're going to have little harbor spots where you can bring out these ships here and you can go ahead and place them on and you can do battle there uh, and then you're going to have certain rules and requirements to how you drop out these guys the hoplites or your footmen as you were to say and it's going to be based on the locations that you move to and what I like about this as well is you're going to have these colonies here and uh, uh, cards are going to give you the option of, of putting these guys in play and when you do it's going to open up new land territories that will allow you to coincide and go through one way or another. Oh, I'll drop one. We'll just say that this one <laughs> goes here and it'll let you open up new roads on the map which is going to let you move and try and conquer other additional spaces which is a nice little twist as well. You're going to have different um, different locations like cities and me metropolises, megapolises, etc. 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 All true to form. I'll have to get that later. But uh, I just dig the theme of this game. I dig the quality and the style of this game. It all rings really, really well. The fact that you have multiple options for the different wars, that you, war times that you can choose to play with, as well as the different characters, how even the characters are unique in how many armies and fleets they have, the types of your different naval and military leaders that you're going to have. It just has a whole lot to offer. Me not being a super hardcore experienced war gamer, was able to understand this game, go through it and enjoy myself is a huge plus because most of the time these things confuse me and uh, I just don't really get it. And when I was playing with the gals here originally, it took us a while to, to grasp this game, just going through the rules. But with videos, it started to make a little bit more sense to me and to them. And once I got into it and just went through the steps here on this thing, it was it was very easy and, and it worked really, really well. Overall, Sparta is an excellent game. This is a lot of fun. It is really cool historically. It is high quality. The artwork is excellent as well. I, I don't have a whole lot to say about it negatively, except this is a long game. This is an intense game to understand if you are newer to the hobby. If you're a war gamer though, this is probably gonna be no problem at all for you. So if you're jumping into this game as a war gamer and you like the theme and you like the unique actions and how, how the game plays out, then this is gonna be something for you for sure. But for the newer gamers or people that have never played a war game before, this is still gonna be some hot water to jump into. I'm not saying you shouldn't, but I should uh, let you know that you should probably check out the rules, see how it fully plays, or even watch the video in the description to see how the game goes out so you can understand if this is something for you. Overall though, this is a solid recommendation. I really enjoyed the game Sparta. This one right here. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Sparta by Plague Island Games. If you're interested in picking this bad boy up, you can go ahead and do so in the link in the description or you can get this game on Kickstarter. You can also go ahead and check out our website unfilteredgamer.com, blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. And that's where we have all of our stuff that isn't in video form. You can watch our live streams every Saturday, Sunday, Sunday at 6.30 p.m. PST. And you can watch us play games uh, just like this one. In fact, we actually have played a war game before on the live stream. Um, it was like five hours long, but we managed to get through it because we had the designer there, which was really nice. <laughs> all right, guys, that's all I got for you this time. And as always, I look forward to battling my 300 with you next time, which is actually not 
too off as a movie historically, um, based on what I know. I mean, it is off, but it's not as far off as, as people might think it is, which is kind of a cool, cool tidbit. Yeah. Persians were ruthless. <laughs>